Mohamed Boulel was in trouble long before last night's horror. Don't mistake the beautiful moneyed Nice you may imagine with the world Boulel inhabited. He'd lived in Nice North, an area rife with racial and economic tension, gun violence, and extremists capitalizing on despair. As police raided his most recent apartment in the neighborhood of Abattoir today, they learned he'd been fired from his job as a delivery driver for falling asleep at the wheel. He was also convicted of several crimes, including road rage in May, for hitting another driver with a wooden pallet. He was separated from his wife, who had taken his three children. And he was described as a boozing, abusive, volatile, odd man. He's someone who drinks, who smokes, who steals, said his neighbor. He smoked hash, stole bicycles he'd sell for 50 or 60 euros. So police knew him, but apparently not French or international intelligence services who claim there were no early indications of links with terror groups. That's even though Boulel did have the familiar resume of a jihadist, of those crooks turned attackers who carried out brutalities in Brussels and Paris and beyond anti-terror investigators are now scouring his online activity. The investigation has a lot to find out about the conditions in which he was able to get the gun he used and the truck he used, said the French prosecutor. And they need to determine if there were accomplices. What investigators know is Boulel planned this. July 11th, he rented the refrigerated 18-ton truck parking it in the hills nearby. He rode his bicycle to it last night, drove it around for an hour. Then at 10.45, he turned on to the Promenade des Anglais from a side street near a children's hospital. This part of the promenade was still open to traffic. A few blocks away, he killed the first two pedestrians. 700 meters later, pictures show at least seven more bodies. After that, a larger crowd of maybe 10 is hit. Nobody knew what was going on. We all just knew that we had to run for our lives. He sped up, forced the truck onto the part of the promenade for pedestrians only. I suddenly heard the crush and people uh, shouting. It was outside Hotel Negresco when he started shooting at police and accelerated again. We, we heard these sounds, pop, 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 pop. This is where stories of incredible bravery come in. See that motorcycle? It seems its rider tried to stop or slow the truck. Then there are the reports of the man who jumped onto the truck to grab the driver who then fired at it. That moment allowed police to move in to shoot the attacker, killing him outside the Hyatt Regency. He had been driving and killing for nearly two kilometers. As police went through that truck last night and today, they found Boulez's bicycle and an odd collection of weapons. Beyond the automatic pistol and cartridges, said the prosecutor, police found a replica pistol, two replica Kalashnikovs and a decommissioned grenade. What else was he planning? That is still a worry. Is anyone else out there? With the state of emergency extended, in theory, France will have more resources to find out but the French are not confident in their government or investigators now. The French president's motorcade booed as he made his way through parts of Nice today. Adrian joins us with more. Adrian, why the hostility towards uh, Francois Hollande? You know, they're completely fed up, uh, definitely losing faith in the capacity of their government to protect them. You know, France was still under a state of emergency yesterday. Thousands of people on the streets celebrating Bastille Day. In this climate, that's the sort of scenario that demands heavy security. So you can understand their anger when they say, hey, why was that truck allowed to be in the area for so long? Why didn't anyone look inside? How did it break through the cordon? And what is the effect of extending the state of emergency? You know, it means police vacations get canceled. It means uh, military personnel continue to patrol the streets. But the French are saying, is that really going to make a whit of difference? Well, that's a good question. I mean, is there a better way? Is there a solution? If you look at p police presence on the street, you know, an added presence can accomplish something. It can stop some attacks, but only in what security agencies call the five minutes to boom window. In other words, the very last seconds. Extra cops on the street don't do anything to prevent attacks early. We don't know. The problem is we don't know what this was all about, this murder spree. We just don't know. But 
we do know that after the terror attacks in France in 2015, the French Parliament said, look, we have to do better than this. We need, we need to coordinate. There are so many intelligence agencies in France that operate independently. Somebody's got to get them together. There has to be one coordinating body. And yet that's not happening here. And so you can understand that the frustration is building and people are getting tired of empathetic words. They really want action. They need it. Tired of tragedies. All right. Yeah. Adrian, thanks so much. Okay.